All right, so UV pass. Yeah, it's that time <laughs> where I redo this tutorial. I previously done a UV pass compositing tutorial, but uh, yeah, demystifying a new series. So we have to talk about the UV pass that it is pretty cool. It is one of my favorite passes. And what it allows you to do basically is change textures in compositing. And it is just as cool as it sounds. So currently we have a simple setup over here. If I just and then on the rendering over here, you can see we have a simple sphere with a wood texture on. So if we go to shading, you can see just a simple wood texture, right? And yeah, and the uh, we are in cycles and it only works with cycles, the UV pass. And under passes, we have position. Uh, don't need a need position normal, but yeah, we have the UV pass and the diffuse and glossy passes. Actually, we don't even need the glossy passes in this one. But yeah, so that's all we have. And let's hit F12 to render the image out and let's check out how to use the UV pass. So let's go to compositing. And right now we have a super simple scene here. So now if I just control shift left click on this UV nude uh, dot socket, whatever you want to call it, uh, we'd get this. And this is what the UV pass looks like. And basically it contains the human V coordinates. I, I think I'm, I'm right about this. Uh, but yeah, that's what it uh, has. And what it allows us to do is, like I said, uh, apply textures to meshes, geometry that that is being that is UV unwrapped, right? And yeah, that's just the basics of it. But the way you can use it is really up to your creativity. Uh, you can use it as creatively as possible. But let me show you uh, how to use that. So we have a node called Map UV in Blender right and this basically requires two inputs it requires an image it could be anything and a uv uh input as well so we, we have a uv pass over here so let's connect that and now really what we need is another uh image right so this image i already have it on my second monitor ready and yeah <laughs> i do have a second monitor now so yeah let's connect that to the image and now let's take a look and boom shakalaka look at that <laughs> How awesome is that? Like, we went from this to this, and I am so sorry. Let me just... Look at that. You know, I never uh, expect messages. <laughs> but anyway, we went from this, this wooden texture, to this and in an instant. And right now, it looks pretty cool. And you might say, you know what, job done, compositing is done. But when it comes to... Uh, larger scenes right uh, it it we basically just have to work differently and even right now it doesn't look like it's a part of the scene because you can see over here the lighting we have a bit of shadow over here whereas here it's just plain surface so how would we go about uh using these shadows or how would we apply the lighting to our newly uh changed texture so the way to do that is pretty simple right so let me just bring this bad boy right up and basically what we need to do is recompile our passes right so in this case we only have diffuse because that's all this material is just a diffuse pass so let's quickly recompile it by adding in a mix no id mask mix node and the formula is pretty simple we take the diffuse direct and indirect and we add them together and then we take the output of that connect it over here and then we multiply it with the color pass so take a look at this and this so everything is looking good and we don't have the alpha so what i can do is just add an alpha over node connect this to the foreground which is this one and then i will just connect this to the factor and over here i will take down the alpha also make it black there we go so now now we have hopefully the alpha what is what is going on over here i think i need to do this or like switch this perhaps yeah look at that so the alpha yep so now we have our original image just as it was now how would we go about introducing this well take a look at this right we have the diffuse direct and diffuse indirect and then we have diffuse color now diffuse color is what contains the color information of our scene now right now this is a pretty simple scene but soon as the tutorial will progress i'll make it a tad bit complicated and as you can see this diffuse color is getting multiplied right over here so this is getting multiplied with this and we get this so if we hijack this connection and what i mean by that is instead of using this diffuse color if i just use this and now if i view it look at that now we have properly uh just 
intervened the process and added this newly textured textured spear into the mix and it looks amazing it it is magic when you think about it and that is why a uv pass is one of my favorite passes to work with because it just allows you to change textures now uh, let's make things a bit difficult so i'll add a uv sphere again move it somewhere over here all right that looks cool maybe i'll move it on the y-axis so i'll move it up that bit behind shade it smooth of course and now let's just i'll just i'll just stop the rendering and i'll hit f12 to render that bad boy out all right cool and now if you take a look at compositing oh look now we have that texture applied to this the spear as well which is pretty cool but what if you don't want that what if you only want the front spear to have the fabric texture and the the, the next the, the older one to just remain as it is right so for that what we have here uh, is we need to do a few things differently all right so let me just drag this bad boy out and let's just first use a crypto mat so basically we need a mask right to just select this this sphere and apply that so we need a mask so luckily we have a crypto mat so let's just uh, add a crypto mat to the image because this is the new crypto mat node so you don't need to connect these sockets over there but anyway so let's just go to pick and let's just pick this so tada we have picked it and now uh we have the mat ready so that's pretty good but i am just so sick of this left to right workflow in blender top down it's it's really the best trust me that's one of the reasons why i love nuke this just gets me so i'll just bring this up for a while and now we have this diffuse color right which has the, the the wooden texture and our white diffuse color so what we need to do is manipulate this data so let's add a mix node and connect this to the bottom socket so this is the foreground and then i'll connect this pass right over here to the top socket which is the foreground and now basically if i take the factor down you'll notice that it goes up and oh, basically it changes from this socket to this socket but hey now we have a mask so this mat socket if I connect this to the factor, and if I view this, look at that. This one uh, got the <laughs> the fabric. So if I just invert this, and now look at that. This one got that, and now we are getting some anti-aliasing happening over here, and that happens from time to time. So I've noticed, and this may be a bug in Blender, uh, it is that sometimes uh, if you just re-render the whole thing, if you just re-render it, uh, it will work out just fine so let's just keep it for now okay what can we do and now let's take our newly modified uh -huh, diffuse color pass and connect that to the bottom socket of the multiply node and then let's just view it and look at that and by the way if you press home it will center the image wherever you are so yeah hope another cool shortcut so that's one way to select and modify passes right and so here are a, a few I, I, the, the tutorial is over at this point you already know how to do this you just have to manipulate it and do all of this and cool stuff with it so now comes the the, 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 the time where we talk about uh, what to do and when to best use it so i would not recommend to completely change texture and uh, unless it is it's like the only thing you can do right if you have the time go back and render re-render the image out and and the uv pass is best used when you want to just add like dust or scratches on the object or something something minute right because if you want to change textures directly right right now it's working because if we take a look at the original image right this one it has roughness set to one it, it doesn't have any normal information so it's working just fine but if i had if i would add the normal map and roughness map of this right of this wood things would really look different over here because the well we just know that wood is well it's going to be its roughness values based on reality they are going to be a tad bit different uh, compared to each other right so that's that's one thing and the roughness the you would see the normal maps right over here so if i quickly do that to show you that i'm not a maniac basically if i just take the normal and if i just add it over here and set it to non-color oops if i add a normal not this jesus n-o-r-m-a-l normal have strength sure why not 
and then if I connect that over here, you'll see that, okay, now there's a bit of definition to the image. But now if I render this image out, and if I take it to compositing, uh, luckily we are not affected. Okay, so you can see here in the diffuse pass that it's there. Uh, it's not shown over here, but if I increase the intensity of it, I'm sure you will see that. And it is, I guess that's a fail experiment. Let me just go and change the strength to something like five. And then let's just hit F12 again to render it out. Uh, I guess this lighting is that cool, but again, it's it's not showing and that that's my bad, but it is one of the things you would want to consider. Okay, so, and again, seams. Right now, the seam is, I think, somewhere over here at the bottom. So right now you're not seeing the seam. <laughs> but if you are replacing textures entirely, then you will see a bit of seam. So that's something you have to work with. And when it comes to tiling, so right, if you want to tile this image, uh, you can use the transform node that we have over here that will change the scale. Okay. All right, point two perhaps. All right, so as you can see, this transform node doesn't, it, it doesn't exactly work the way we want to, right? Uh, I think scale, there's there's a node called scale. Let's see if that works, right? Uh, two, five, point two. Yep, it doesn't work as well. So uh, are we limited to just the same texture, uh, the same scale? Of course not. Over here in this texture panel, right, we have a thing called new. So just click that and then just select the texture you want. So I think it's this fabric one. And now once it is loaded in here, what I can do is add a texture node. Select the texture and just plug it in. Now the, I mean, some tiny bit changes over here, but now over here we have a scale parameter. So if I set this to point two, you can see that it scale, it, it tiles basically. That's what it does. And yeah, so that's one thing to for those of you who stuck around, that's a cool little trick. Use this texture panel, plug in the texture over here, and then bring it in. So that's another another way to work with textures uh, in Blender, or at least in compositing, because it allows you to tile stuff, right? So that's pretty cool. Other than that, I think, yeah, this is it. This is the tutorial. Uh, it's a short one, yes, but packed, packed with uh, some cool little UV stuff. So again, it really uh, is up to you how you would use it. Uh, and possibilities are limitless you know i would recommend watching some new tutorials because they really use like they use the nor some 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 like i mean i use uh, let's say i only want let's say a few grass pieces or a few scratches on top of it so what i do is i take the position and then i'll separate it on the x y and z axis and then i'll take the z axis so over here and then what i can do is add a math node or mix node would work just fine. Set this to multiply and take the z-axis right over here. So this is our newly created max. So we do this, we do this, and we do this. And look at that. So now this texture is only appearing on the top. Now this looks a bit weird, but if it were grass or something else, uh, it would look perfect. So yeah, that's one of the few things that you can do. And again, nuke uh has a lot of stuff that you can do over there but when it comes to uv pass i think it's the same thing so anyway uh, enough talk this is the tutorial hopefully you learned something new today and i'll see you in the next part of this series of demystifying i think we'll be talking about the position pass and it has some cool you can do some really cool stuff with it so yeah that's that's it for me i'll see you in the next one until then be infinite